Whoa. <laughs> hey pilots, welcome back. Look what we have here. We have the 2500 millimeter ASW-17 uh, motor glider type deal. Pretty sweet. You can see it's got a wheel on the bottom. It has flaps, has ailerons. Um, I think you probably could set up crow in this one. So, um, and it has a motor on it, so you don't need a tow plane, you don't need a high start, you don't need any of that. So this is the plug and play model. This is the box it comes in. All the specs are pretty much on the back. Oops, sorry, it's upside down. All right, here we go. So, it's got a Predator 3541 motor, 40 amp ESC, snap together assembly, no glue, gotta love that, two piece wing, functional flaps, fold away high efficiency propeller, and it's made of highly durable EPO. So over here on this side here, you can see a picture of how it breaks down. It's got these metal spars. Um, anyways, if you're watching this, I'm sure you know all that. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. I've never seen one of these in person. And I also have not looked in the box at all yet. So again, we, I always do these live, so to speak. Um, I've watched a few videos here and there. And one thing that I have seen that looked cool was people use the foam as kind of a, a way to transport. So I'll have to look into how to do that and I'll show you how to make that happen as well. Don't forget, links for everything will be down below in the description. And don't forget, I have discount codes for FMS. So it'll save you guys some money. It's free to you. Why not? Who doesn't like saving money? Basically, it's like free money to you. Yeah, this thing's massive. <laughs> All right, we made it. Nothing else in the box. Let's get this tape cut and we'll show you how it comes packaged. I know lots of people are interested in that kind of thing. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, guys. I really appreciate you watching this. All right, did I open the right side first? Hey, it looks like it. Look at that. Okay, nothing in the top half. You guys can hear the rain. That's why we're inside unboxing. Oh, this is really big. Wow. Okay, here's the manual. You hear that rain? This is life in the Pacific Northwest right here. It does say to apply Loctite to the metal spars. Here's the metal spars. I'll show you how that comes packaged. A little bit more tape to cut here. Here's a wing half. That's big. That's big. Oh, cool. We got a little skid on the back here. Got a plastic leading edge. That's really nice. How does that work? Oh, okay, so you got little sliders. There's little pins that go in to lock in. And you see you got your connection here for your servos. Now you notice the servos are not hooked up, but they just have a set screw. So you'll slide it in there, put the set screw in and uh, good to go once you power up your radio. Always move the surfaces. These move pretty free. If you look in there, there is metal spars in there. That's crazy. Some strong stuff there. Oh, I just saw another piece of plastic. So look here on the flaps. The back edge, a piece of plastic, so you're not gonna ding that. That is awesome. I really went above and beyond on making sure these things last for y'all. Other wing, same deal. Looks great. Got a little extra glue on this one. Not anymore. Better than not enough glue, right? That's what we like to see. It's too much glue. Um, boy, I'm gonna run out of space with this bad boy. I'm just gonna stick that back in there. Here is the main attraction. I don't even know if I can get it all in view for you guys. It's so big. wheel. You can see the ESC is in the bottom in that hole. Uh, how's this come off? Looks like we got a button here. Hey, here we go. Okay. Very cool. Nice 
big battery hatch area. All the connections are here and labeled. Uh, there's the ESC wire out down at the bottom. We got here. You need an XT60 for your battery plug. Here we have your rudder. Not sure how that goes on yet. We'll figure that out yet. Oh, it just clips in place. Okay, so if you look in there, you can see there's a rod going through here. It looks like carbon, but I could be wrong. And then here on the rudder, if you guys can tell, it just clips in. That's pretty cool. On the bottom here, we've got a plastic skid. These metal spars are crazy. Cut those out here. Okay, these are chunky. Chunky metal spars that are threaded. They'll thread into here. We've got a metal part there that they'll go into. Pretty cool. Uh, what else we got? Here's the elevator. This one's stiff. Make sure you work that one back and forth. Looks like it just slides and locks into place and then same kind of deal. You'll need an Allen just to tighten that down. Always use blue Loctite on these uh, metal fittings, guys. Awesome. And then, is there something in here? There's something in here. So here we have <coughs> so a bunch of set screws. We have two more little linkages. Okay, so that'll be for the rudder and the elevator are not hooked up on the fuselage. I think that's all the parts, guys. All right, well, let me uh, get situated here, and when we come back, we'll show you how to build it. So first thing in the manual is putting the rudder onto the vertical. It says it just snaps into place, um, as we kind of determined before. So get stuff kind of lined up here. Okay. Just like that. All right, that was easy. Next, horizontal. Where's that at? Here it is. Work that a little bit more, and that is just going to slide back into place, into here. Snaps into place, are you kidding me? We're almost done. Um, the linkages, I'm not going to hook those up until I hook up the radio. Uh, for obvious reasons, we'll get everything centered and then we'll hook them up, make sure that they're correct. Next thing in the manual, put it on the metal spars. Now again, it did say to use blue Loctite. I'm just going to screw these on for right now. I think if you use the box to transport it, I don't think you want these in there permanently. So those are getting screwed in. <laughs> this thing literally takes less than a minute to put together. So you guys can see. That's where you get your dihedral. And then you just snap your wings on. Unbelievable. Let me get this at an angle here. So I don't hit the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and put, I guess these here is what you can put a tool in that hole. There's a hole in these to make sure that they're tight. I'm not going to because I figure when I'm done flying for the day, we'll probably take those back off, right? Slippery. I think it latched in though. There it goes. Yep, both latches latched in. It's easier to do if you grab the wing tip and pull. Trying to do it for the camera there was a little bit tricky. Then the final wing. This is insane.
snap, snap, that's it. Glider's complete. All right, hope you guys like this video. Just kidding. We're not done yet. Let's go ahead and just snap this bad boy back on there. Completed airplane. I love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we're going to put the receiver in next. This is going to be a short video. I got my AR630 down in here. I hooked everything up by the book except, because I'm using a six channel, I had a spare slot, the ailerons. So I put one aileron the other aileron in separate slots and set up the wing for dual aileron servos. That way I can do some crow later, which might be fun for some steep approaches. Um, we'll see how it goes. So for this bad boy, I'm gonna use a 4S2200 LiPo. So let's go ahead and bind it up. So hold the bind button down, plug it in. Bind. Oh, got to hold it. Binding. Bind complete DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. There it goes. That's a big propeller, not going to lie. Well, it's got a brake on it. That way it'll fold back. Okay, good. Throttle cut. Good to go. Uh, turn that off though. Let's calibrate the ESC real quick. You guys gotta always remember to do this. Unplug, full throttle, plug it in until it beeps, then go to idle. You might not have to wait, maybe just after one or two beeps. Okay, good. That's good. Throttle cut. Good. All the servers are moving. Okay, now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pop the wings off because they're so big. But And then I'm going to go to the tail and we're going to start hooking up linkages because we know everything is centered right now. So we're going to unplug that. I'm going to be careful not to bump anything. And uh, let's get all the things tightened up so then we can play with it from there. So to pop these wings off, there's these sliders underneath, which looks feels like they go back. Or no, they both go in towards each other, and then you got to pull. So having never done this before, i got to figure out a method to make that happen. Okay, you can grab it by the wing tip and grab it by the little kind of skid wheel underneath and give it a little yank. Then that'll come off. Not bad. Then we'll repeat the process for the rest of the bird and get the wing off. Two little linkages out here. Uh, does it say which servo horn to put it in? Looks like it shows it going. The rudder goes in the very end. The elevator one goes one in from the end. So. Rudder goes in the very end, like such. Then we'll spin this. What do we got here? Just like that. And I didn't grab an Allen. Let me grab an Allen. But basically, now you'll just tighten down that set screw, but put a little dab of blue Loctite on there so it doesn't come loose. I'm going to back it out, put a little dab of this on there. And then screw it right back in. Hold it centered. Then lock it down. Now repeat the process for the elevator. All right, I tried to do it with the wings off, didn't really work out, so I ended up putting it back on here. So one wing had screws in both, one wing did not, so I needed two of the four extra set screws it came with. Um, I got my blue Loctite, put that on. I've got the elevator, rudder, everything done here. Stuff set up in the radio. Everything's going the right way. Um, now the flaps, so, and the crow, well, the ailerons. So since I split the ailerons in the receiver, I can do things like crow. 
and I'm um, just kind of doing a test first. But anyway, so the flaps, you guys can see from there. So here's a half flap setting. And then for full flaps, I have the ailerons going up. So watch. And of course, I did my flight modes with the flap switch. So in flight on my Maiden, I can trim my elevator, ailerons, and rudder. None of this guessing goofy stuff with the um, percentages and all that garbage. So be sure to check out my other video on how to do that properly if you don't know. But uh, yeah, everything is done. I had to reverse, let me tell you real quick. The ailerons and the rudder. The elevator was right. The other ones I had to reverse. Um, everything else is done other than CG, which I'm going to figure out next. So let me flip it around, get it back up, and uh, we'll check the CG spot. But while it's upside down, I am going to mark it first. So here's how I do the CG stuff. Got my caliper, has metric on it, says 70 to 80, so I'm going to go to 75 on here. 75, lock it down. Then from the leading edge back. And then what I do is I take my cool little stickers, And what I'll do is I'll put the center of kind of the of the unit. Let me line that up again. So I'm gonna be right in there. Should be center of the CG range. So then I'll flip it over and do the same to the other side. It'll at least get you close enough, usually, um, to have a successful maiden. Okay, there's that one. Now the CG stickers are installed. And now we don't have to guess whenever we go to the field or have to look at the manual. Um, we know. This is a big airplane. <laughs> Used to big airplanes, but for a foamy, this is a monster. All right, so let's just go ahead and we'll just set the battery in here. Put the canopy on and figure out our center of gravity. So that's gonna go right there. The nice thing about these stickers is I can feel them. I don't even have to look. So it needs to go back a little bit further. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Then what I'll, usually I'll take a pen or something. I don't have one here, but I'll write it onto the, I'll put a line here onto the Velcro that's in there for right now so that I know where to go. I'll put a little line on the side once I finalize it after flying that that's what I like, but uh, yeah. All right guys, there you go. She is completed. I did the throws, uh, went by the book with about 15% expo. That's usually my go-to number. Here's where my receiver wound up right here on the side, the AR630. Here's where my battery is going to be, 4S 2200. Um, just have to do a range check, and then we'll go out and do a maiden. So the next time you see this big glider, we'll be at the field. So I appreciate you guys watching this, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And follow the links down below. Save yourself some money if you're interested in one, and we'll see you at the field.